Hey drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the great Rock and Roll Hall of Fame winner, Michael DeRozier. He was a drum teacher of mine and a friend, and this guy plays serious good drums. And this is with heart early on. Here we go. But um, this was our first 45 that did anything. It's called Magic Man. <laughs> the clothing back then. Ah. Kind of a bottom three up, one down there. Nice shot of Drozier's left hand. Nice French grip, thumb on top. Obviously, big John Bonham fan. Nice. Roger Fisher, the original guitarist. That's so cool. He's just bending up, going down, the other guy's up. That's cool. There was no keyboard on the live show, so. Oh, Tiffany! See, his hi-hats are pretty high up. Giving his left hand a lot of room to strike the snare. He's always a rim shot guy. He's got the 26-inch bass drum like Bonham, 14-inch rack, 16, 18 floors. Ah! <laughs>
Big stroke rolls. Right, left, left. Ah, paradiddles. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. A lot of doubles with single kick in there. Right, left, left. Paradiddles, double strokes. And speed it up. Oh. Double strokes and triplets over bass drum. Like six stroke rolls and pair of diddle diddles, a lot of pair of diddle diddles. Nice. Dumps. Two up, one down. Crossovers, triplets. Nice. Two up, two down. Got to. That was Bonham Lex. <laughs> Into rock and roll. <laughs> a little sharp there. Yeah! Wow, checking that out. Yeah, that is cool, cool, cool. Oh man, that's just great to see some of that classic heart, of the original lineup, which was so cool. They got so popular and unfortunately things kind of went south. When I first started taking lessons with Michael DeRozier, it was kind of at the beginning of the end of him and Steve Fawson being members of the group. Howard Leese, the guitar player and songwriter, was starting to write songs with Ann and Nancy, and the three of them were just kind of doing all the writing and using drum machines, which were very, very popular at this time. We're talking like the 80s, right? And so they wanted to call, according to Mike, have Mike and Steve just pretty much just play what they'd already written for them. So the band ceased to be a band in a collaborative way, and it became more of songwriters with sidemen. I think a similar thing happened with Journey uh, when um, they started um, writing, you know, Steve Perry and Neil Schoen and uh, Jonathan Kane, the keyboard player, began doing a lot of writing. And again, this was during the drum machine popularity, and so they used drum machine tracks and wanted to have Steve come in and kind of play what they'd already programmed. And again, it stopped becoming a band and it became more songwriters with sidemen. So that's kind of the big difference. Uh, there's a lot of great solo artists out there. And then they, have, of course, hire a band. Usually the band on the CD is different than the touring band. Not all the time. But if you are a band band, meaning everybody is part of the collaborative process, then it stays the same on the road as it did on the CD. You know, Rush being an example, or Led Zeppelin before John Bonham died so on and so forth. So anyways, it was just really great to go back and check out some Michael DeRozier. There isn't tons of him on the internet. Um, this was prior to people having so much access to video cameras like they do now and cell phones so people can shoot lots of videos now. And of course the sound is really good. This was a really nice little platform for them to uh, go ahead and perform their classic song, Magic Man, which was very cool. And I found it because of the solo. I think somebody might have sent it in to me. Um, I did watch a few different Mike DeRozier solos. And then this one, I just listened to a snippet of it. I didn't want to look at it too much because I like to just make this a fresh, off-the-cuff, play-by-play reaction to what's going on. 
but some great hand footwork there. Of course, the classic Bonham sort of approach with the main big kit that was pretty much a John Bonham clone drum set. In fact, <clears throat> that was the interesting thing was when I studied with him, I'd drive over to his house and he would have two of these drum kits facing each other. And so you would just sit there and I would just play a beat and then he would do some solos and then I would try to figure out what he's doing and at first it was over my head because he would show me how to take like four note patterns, right, left, right, kick and play it in triplets. And that was like, what? How can you do that? And so I ended up recording most all of the lessons on a little cheap cassette tape player. And in fact, I have all those cassettes still stored away. But what I would do is I'd come home and listen to the cassette and then transcribe what he played. And once I was able to transcribe what he played, then I could see clearly what it was going on and the whole thing started to make a lot more sense. So that's the advantage to reading. He did know how to read music. He wasn't super comfortable with it. In fact, at one point he was going to have me help him write a book because I was so much more comfortable with notation. But we kind of parted ways at that point. I think I did some moving and started having kids and who knows what happened. It was a long time ago, but I'm super grateful to what I learned from Michael DeRozier and his playing is just fantastic. Um, interesting sounding snare compared to what I've heard later. This was a little bit earlier. Um, and just to see the band at their young developing stage of how everything was getting happening. So kind of interesting to throw a drum solo in Magic Man. I loved at the very end there where he did that the very end of Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin, um, that concept. When in fact I saw Michael DeRozier, I think it was the uh, Baby Lestrange, uh, maybe that was it. They had a double live album out. And they were so big at the time that they played three nights in a row at the Seattle Center Coliseum, which is called the Key Arena. And it was very fun just to go there and go, hey, <laughs> I'm way in the back, of course. But then they did rock and roll because Ann Wilson's a big fan of Robert Plant singing. And of course, Michael DeRozier's a big fan of John Bonham's drumming like so many of us. So at the end of their version of rock and roll, Michael DeRozier took off and did this big major solo. And I ended up using that idea with my band. But here it was on Magic Man, which was unusual from what I'd heard before. But it was a good opportunity to capture a very early a younger Michael DeRozier, still sounding great, um, very powerful, good hand work, it's really nice kick work, um, nice thick sounding drums, and cool to hear how everything was and just to see the band play. So anyways, there you go, Michael DeRozier, one of my favorite drummers in the rock and roll category of drumming and a really great teacher. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out some of the text box information for lessons, online courses, and I'll see you on the next reaction and analysis video. Until then, take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.